Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Oblivion. Well, last time, we made our way here, to the Shivering Isles. And today, we've got a journey to make, because we've been told to check in at the new Shioff Palace to say hello to the Prince of Madness, and uh, that means uh, I've got a choice, because, uh, yes, indeed, there seem to be two main routes we could be going. Down to the south, we've got the Lands of Dementia, bit dark, a bit grim, a bit swampy, or alternatively, to the north, the bright, colourful lands of Mania. So, obviously, we're doing that, though, um, yes, I suspect there may be downsides I don't know about yet. I mean, for one, the road does feel like it's a fair bit longer going this way, but, um, yes, there was the sort of uh, implication that possibly the people in Mania are going to be less friendly than the people down in Dementia, but screw it, I can never resist a lovely, colourful overworld. So here we go, this would appear to be, yes, the main road going north, all I need to do is uh, keep following it, there might be, yes, some uh, small branches are off it at one point, but if I just stay on the main road and just keep going straight on, I should get to the city eventually, though, while I'm going, just, yeah, get to grips with uh, local creatures, local plants, any local towns, etc, etc, because seriously... Is it just me, or yes, do a lot of these plants look like they might logically belong underwater? I feel like this place is going to, yes, maybe sink at some point or another. I mean, come on, the red kelp even produces a gas bladder that can grant water breathing. This island has been underwater at some point. Only the big thing of note is, yeah, black tar seems to be everywhere on this island, and uh, it does provide a nice, easy way of making shock damage or poison damage. So, uh, yeah, gather that when we see it. That potentially is a bit on the useful side. And uh, I see over here a camp. So, okay. Normally, camp means uh, hostile bandits. But does this place even have, like, bandits? Maybe it's people who have gone bananas. Longtooth camp. Okay, I see. Oh. I see people in blue robes. That implies a mage to me. Okay. Just don't attack them yet. They might well be, you know, not nasty. They live in a camp, which means, you know, probably nasty. But... I might as well just, you know, try and say hi to them first. And... Uh, transformed heretic. Okay, they're not willing to speak to me, not willing to speak to me, not willing to speak to me. But, nice thing is, no armor, meaning you should fall over. Nice and quick, buddy. Lovely. And also, did you just summon... You just summoned something I've not seen before. Okay, not sure what that was, but... Right, you're basically conjurers. See that blue robe? Heretic. But what does heresy mean... In a world where, yes, madness is the prevailing wisdom. Like, not madness? Were you a prophet of sanity or something? I don't know. Oh, hang the cock on. I might be able to get answers right now because uh, these are not just random books. These are new books that pertain to the Shivering Isles. Zealotry is an abomination that must be wiped from the Shivering Isles. We cannot suffer their beliefs to spread to even one more soul. They name us heretics for our lack of belief. We gladly accept the name and will make an honourable one. It is not heresy to speak truth. It is not heresy to speak out against an unjust lord. It is not heresy to take arms and action in defence of true belief. We are the so-called heretics of the Shivering Isle, but we do not speak heresy. We speak the truth. Our lord is but a man. He is only flesh and blood, not a god, certainly not a Daedric prince. So, okay. That's interesting. They believe my dark prince of madness isn't a Daedric prince at all, though. Okay, I went up to his statue in Cyrodiil, and he spoke to me through the statue. Now, that doesn't prove he's a Daedric prince, but it certainly proves he's got some impressive magic going on, I suppose. Oh, and better and better, that might be the thing you just summoned. A hunger, apparently. So, okay, big hungry beast that wants to eat me. Lovely. And as for why they believe this, okay. So, he perverts the teachings of Arden Sol, he who gave his heart's blood. Now, I don't know who Arden Sol is. I'm not sure I've heard that name before, but... Okay, 
I'm starting to get a feel for may be the local problem. This might be what the lad wants me to sort out. He's all of a sudden got a big heretic uprising going on against him. Meanwhile next door, the predecessors. An examination of the curious ruins of the Shivering Isles and their terrible significance for our future. Oh, now that's a good clickbait title for your book, mate. I love it. The ancient ruins that dot the countryside are a familiar sight to the inhabitants of the Shivering Isles. So, okay. The Shivering Isles do have inhabitants, like long-term inhabitants, not just people being pulled in over and over and over again by the mysterious door. It does have like a long-term population of some description, that's good to know. And just indeed, so familiar is their presence, their true significance has escaped the notice of most. Until now, I have recently uncovered the terrible secret hidden in these ruins. I will now share this secret with you, but be warned, this knowledge may be too much for some, as you will know the awful fate that lies in store for you, but will be powerless to do anything to prevent it. If you are strong enough of mind to withstand the psychic shock of having your grim future laid bare, read on. Oh my goodness. This is the most dramatic book I've ever read. This is brilliant. Okay, so step one, they're all really bloody old, but... Once I began to accurately establish the dates of the various ruins, a disturbing pattern emerged. The ruins fell into distinct periods, each period separated by exactly a thousand years from the others, though Silana remains the exception, being many thousands of years older than the next to oldest ruin, suggesting only that ruins from many earlier eras lie waiting to be discovered or have been lost to the ravages of time. What could account for this process of destruction repeating every a thousand years without fail? The legend of the Grey March sprang immediately to mind, the ancient tale of a vengeful god venting his wrath upon the land. What if it were more than a legend? What if it was the dimly remembered account of a real event? Suddenly I realised the significance of the dating of the most recent ruin I had discovered, Ibroca, which my test proved to be about a thousand years old. We come to it at last. The cataclysm is upon us again. I have dated the ruins of Ibroca to great accuracy. I know the very year of our doom. I refrain from publishing the exact date, as this knowledge is a terrible burden that I would not inflict on others. So... Okay, this kind of makes sense and actually matches up with what I was just saying. There's pretty clear evidence to my mind uh, that this island spends some time under the ocean. Is that what it does uh, once every a thousand years? Just nips under the water, everybody drowns, uh, comes back up again, uh, starts slowly being repopulated. A thousand years being long enough for, yes, the previous apocalypse to basically get forgotten about. So, okay. Back down to the road, keep on keeping on, but yes, this is all starting to make sense to me now. Oh, and hello, sexy. Just back on the road, I see something that definitely feels more monster than man, so... Okay, you're not nice. You're not a friend. I'm so sorry, but then John. John, John, John. Who cocking knows in this universe? Just let yourself get spotted and... Okay, you could go invisible, that's a good trick, but can you see invisible enemies? Okay, possibly you can't see invisible enemies, that might be a problem though then again. Okay, hang about, 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 John, oh, there's... He decided to jump on top of my um, summoner and then the invisibility wore off. And okay, because you're invisible, you are significantly less strong than I thought you were going to be. And yes, potentially scouted about could still see you. So no, no, no. Just make sure we get his soul. We do need that. And a hulking scale on and John. Look at him. He looks fishy. He looks kind of like, you know, an anglerfish. And those creatures we saw before, the Grumites, they could very easily be amphibian. It's aquatic creatures. That's what survives when everybody else dies because the island sinks. The local monsters are all aquatic, or at least amphibious. Oh, and perfect timing. Those guys have even got grand souls, which is a brilliant. That's going to keep me going nicely. In fact, hang on, was that... Was that one over there, or was that... Oh! Is that a boob spider, but like not Daedra? Oh, no, significantly less booby and more buggy. Okay, that's much less pleasing to look at in many ways. In fact, John, all right, you're completely 100% right. It's a hermit crab. They're all aquatic. It's all sea creatures. And they are officially elytras. 
Okay, we're on to something here. In fact, I think I possibly have figured out the entire secret of the Shivering Isles uh, the moment I arrived. The very first time I saw that island with, uh, yes, the mysterious door on it, I saw that this island's blatantly been underwater, so I'm feeling pretty bloody proud of myself right now. Okay, keep on keeping on, heading to the east. No need to check every single cave and whatnot. Probably best we, yes, find civilization, because uh, I need answers about a few bits and pieces, and ideally, oh, hang on. Are you a mysterious tree monster? I feel like that's a mysterious tree monster, which possibly I shouldn't be messing with, and... Okay, you're also... Oh, blimey, okay, yep, yeah, definitely mysterious tree monster. Right, summon some assistance. John, it's a tree monster. It's gonna be weak to fire. Let's take you out and... Okay, the local monsters seem to be nowhere near as tough as the local Grumites say. The Grumites were really bloody vicious. Local monsters may look big and tough, but actually, no. They're not so bad at all, especially if they're going to be planty. A verdant gnarl. Okay, definitely planty, probably weak to fire, lovely. Sorry, as I was saying, I need to find civilization because I need some answers. Not just plot answers, but also, uh, yeah, bits and pieces I've been finding dosed about. Madness Ore and Madness Shield Matrix. Do not know what those are, but I kind of feel like, yes, I ought to find out because uh, I feel like that could potentially be some very, very powerful, like, I don't know, Madness swords, madness helmet, something of that nature. I would love a madness hat, mind. Okay, keep on keeping on. And we've got ahead of us, hang about. That looks to me like... Okay, people. People wearing proper armour. Hello, are you just like bandits? Or are you actually like, you know, a, a local patrol of some description? Okay, just go up to them and say hi. Golden Saint, we've got people. Hello, who are you? Who are the Golden Saints? Speak quickly. Okay, so, um, hi, who are you? And, like, is there a reason you're out here? Like, are you the local police? I don't know. New Sheoth is the capital of the Shivering Isles. We Oriole guard Bliss, the manic district of the city. Okay, the Oriole, and uh, the voice was echoing. And there's also, yes, a weird little jewel in your helmet. Are you, like, psychic or something, though, John? The eyes. That's... That's not normal for, like, human or the elves, right? The elves don't have, like, eyes like that. So, okay, apparently I can't ask them what's going on. But, uh, yeah, something's going a bit wrong here. How do you feel about, yes, your, um, Divine Prince of Madness, by the way? Can't help but notice some people not so keen on him right now. Sheogorath rules the Shivering Isles. We, the Oriole, are his favoured soldiers, the most perfect expression of his might. Okay, his private army, gotcha. The domain of the Prince of Madness, Sheogorath. We Oriole are tasked with defending this realm against the lesser beings that would destroy it. Okay, but she's not willing to define what she means by lesser beings. So, okay, point is, uh, we now know what the, well, for now at least, uh, friendly local guards look like. If I run into trouble, go and find these guys. Uh, they might jump into the fight and assist me. Oh, though, speaking of which, hang about. Okay, just the north of me here, which honestly is pretty much the route I'm supposed to be going anyway to follow the road. Uh, there is a very, very big ruin in these parts of the world. So hang about here. What have you guys got in this bit of the world for me? Okay, it's marked with the tower symbol, suggesting, yes, it might just be... Oh, hang on. One of those ruins that was just mentioned in the book. So yeah, these are one of the ancient ruins that pops up roughly every a thousand years, give or take. Though, this is a much bigger one than the one I saw in the fringe. And does that mean... Okay, that's one of the trees. Okay, no sign of grumites on this occasion. Just, uh, yeah, various wildlife dossed about. So, that shouldn't be too difficult to deal with, yeah. These guys are much, much easier to deal with than the actual Grumites are. They are very tanky. Here we go. Milkar officially is the name of this ruin. So, if this is where the map marker is, that would suggest if there's a dungeon around here, probably the door's somewhere in this bit of the world. And just to confirm, we've run into, yes, another one of those invisible lads. 100% scouted about, can see us straight through them. And yeah, they are not too difficult to deal with at all. The lovely invisible anglerfish lot. Hulking scale on once again. Help myself to, yeah. 
water breathing and shock damage. So, okay. Pretty bloody useful. And uh, you have just led me straight to a door. So, okay. Milkar Zetrum. Whatever that is precisely. Okay, hang on. Start putting two and two together here. Inside this location, that's one of the, um, yes, what's it called? Grumites, Grumites, whatever they are. Statues. And we know that this place, yeah, like, predates the current being above water era. Suggesting that possibly these guys are long-term guardians of these particular ruins. Also, I do enjoy how, yes, my sneak is now just so good, uh, I can just walk straight around these bastards, uh, crack open your treasure, and then walk straight out without bothering to fight you. Marvellous. Screw you, you stupid loser. Oh, now this seems good. Deeper and deeper. This is actually somewhere completely different. This was marked as the Nexus, the Milkar Nexus, but this is not a ruin anymore. This is now, uh, yeah, like deep roots of a giant tree and yep giant tree roots i was correct in fact just keep on keeping on bloody hell i feel like i might have stumbled into something here okay basic defenders have gone down but one we've got a giant pile of a yes new sandwich ingredients here including our screaming more now that's gonna go well with bacon and tomato i know it Oh, and Oblivion style, I think we've got some plants that actually fight back here. So hang about, I swear I just saw. Oh yeah, you guys are like organic landmines uh, that want to stab me, aren't you? Not that hard mine, so that's not really the biggest problem in the world. Uh, right, just help myself to all of the lovely flame stalk in the world. Oh yeah, nice easy fire damage and restore health. Not bad, not bad at all. Screaming more chameleon. Never say no to a good ability to make chameleon potions and... Uh, hello there, buddy. By any chance, you like, you know, uh, breathing out poison. Well, okay. For a start, apparently you're like a chest. If I just, you know, get myself right in the, uh, the gas here. Doesn't seem to be hurting me, though I really feel like it should be. Oh, and here's interesting. Not the first time I've seen this, but I didn't notice this before now. Amber. Could be important, could just be a nice thing to sell in town. No idea. Oh, but hello, Saxing. The tree. The root door to the grove of reflection needs a key. Right, I suspect I've just stumbled across, yes, possibly some form of a mission thing a bit early here. Okay, I've definitely stumbled into something, yes, bigger and more important than I meant to here, because uh, we're just doing, you know, a little bit of a uh, pest control, wants to loot all of the madness ore and madness matrices and whatnot, but, um, no, there's, there's stuff here, including sacrificial person, but also mysterious evil button. Okay, he's already dead. What's the worst that could happen? Push the button. And... Right. That's like a, um... A magical turret. That just blasts whatever's here. This is, yeah, not just nice architecture. This is advanced magic. Like, alien ruin style. Oh, and that's just the bloody start, okay? There's a series of rooms off this, yes, yeah, central root nexus thingy. So I've also, yes, just gone and cleared out the bugs uh, over here in Tyrius. And, um, yes, this one's, this one's even more worrying, actually. Because here we go. Side room over here, we have got the Chatter Hall. Which, um, okay, definitely stumbling into something I do not understand here. Diligence Crux. Which is frozen shut, but how would you sort out something being frozen shut? Why with fire, of course. So take the ritual torch, held by any, owned by none. Okay. So in which case can I just... Okay. I can't take it, but I can like just move it like this. So just, yeah, bring it here. Pop it to... Oh. Oh, I feel like I've just... I feel like I'm messing with something I don't understand. And this is... This is... Oh, I've just broken the ritual. I'm really sorry. Did I just break your, like, you know, wholly important ritual? Or possibly, did I just open your... 
Still frozen shards. Okay, you're glowing. Take the ritual torch. Like, okay, that makes... John. There. And then there. And that should thaw it out. The amulet of dis... What the cock? Okay, so... It's an amulet that destroys my own weapon and armor. I am definitely right now toying with stuff I do not understand. But screw it. I've got the, you know, amulet of disintegration. That's fine. Um, problem number three. If we just, uh, mosey on to the end of this area. Turns out there's a door to the realm of uh, Shea Gorath here. And this is not the only one. There are, like, um, others in the same dungeon. So... I feel like I'm gonna really regret opening this door, but... Oh, you just mean outside! Sorry, I kind of thought that meant like something, you know, important and big and dramatic, not just, this is a back door outside. Sorry, I thought this was the Shivering Isles. Apparently it's referred to as, yes, the Realm of Sheagorath. Lovely. Okay, but hang on. No, no, no. I'm on something here. Because there were multiple doors uh, that went in and outside. One over on that side by, yes, the altar of a blasting people. One over there, that just went outside too. But there was also a pier off the root door. The root door to the realm of Shea Gorath. So this presumably will bring me... I, mean, I was kind of hoping to be inside a tree, which... I guess technically I am, but I was hoping for, you know, more of a secret tree exit. Potentially this feels like, you know, just another way to get back outside. So, okay, I suspect you to come back here later when I've got the, yes, special magical tree key of the tree people. Or something of that nature. Still, nice to have the... Okay, it's not that nice to have the uh, amulet of self-destruction given... Uh, I suppose it does let me, you know... Practice my armor skill if I wanted to, you know, be using that a lot. Oh, and you know what else is rather nice? Cannot but notice, just um, just a bit up the road. Uh, that's the village and or hamlet symbol. So okay, forget the road and um, you know my main journey and whatnot. Hello, people. Um, I'd like to know, like, you know, what's going on in the world, if you'd be so kind. And ideally, weapons away. These are going to be lovely, friendly people, because it's a town, not a camp. And, oh my goodness, actual people. Okay, I've located uh, Hale. Who am I? How about a failure, a fraud, an utter sham? I'm a poet without merit, a slave to my own stupidity, and will likely ruin your day. Okay, so you're not a very good poet. Got it. And, uh, I mean, to be honest, that was a very, you know, poetic way of saying you're a bad poet. So, ironically, you've proved you're actually a really good poet. Well done. There's an orc in Crucible who is deathly afraid of cats. Okay, once again, I do not know whether these rumours are actually going to be useful in any capacity, or whether these people have just gone bananas. Okay, like many villagers, just seems to be, yeah, three houses and no inn as far as I can see. But, your reading, your painting, is this an artist community by any chance? If you could help Pike, I think you'd make him very happy. I've grown quite fond of him and can't stand seeing him this way. I'm still working up the nerve to paint his portrait. But I'd rather do it when he's back to his happier self. Hang on, I could swear someone mentioned Pike back in Fringe, but I can't remember what they said about him. The Argonian Bighead is always searching for the Fork of Heripolation. Okay, now that I'm like 90% sure is just nonsense. Right, Mr. Pike, how are we going to cheer you up a bit? It's good to meet you. The name's Pike, and I welcome you to my humble home. Please, make yourself comfortable. Since you're here, I was wondering, do you think you could assist me? I'm having a bit of a crisis. Okay, no problem whatsoever, though. Okay, you know what? She wants him to be happy. Let's tell him some See? jokes just in case that, you know, helps him be a bit more forthcoming with me. Okay, disposition maxed at only 71. Okay, this guy is uh, hard to oh, impress, but 
Mr. Pike, tell me about your crisis, buddy. Well, this is a bit embarrassing, so forgive me. I was a knight of the thorn from Cyrodiil. As soon as I heard the gates to the Shivering Isles opened, I knew a threat was lurking inside. I made my way here and began exploring this strange place. As I was passing Fetid Grove, I was waylaid. Some dastardly Grummite stole my most prized possession, my medallion that signified my membership in the Knights. Okay, so... Do I even have one of those? I mean, presumably they gave me one of those, because I am a Knight of the Thorn too. Or at least I think I am. I'm a member of several knightly orders. I genuinely can't recall, so okay. I can see how that's a problem. I am willing to help, no trouble whatsoever, buddy. I've found a new kind of comforting inner peace here away from the chaos of Cyrodiil. I'm tired of the battles and the politics. But most importantly, I've met the woman of my dreams. If I had to leave Zoe, I think I'd be the loneliest man alive. So you see, everything I want is right here in this beautiful place. Okay, so in which case, why do you need the bloody medallion? Even though I never intend to be a knight again, that medallion represents an important part of my past. It's the only piece of my history that validates who I am. Anyway. Enough of my banter. So will you please help me get back my medallion? Okay, no problem whatsoever, buddy. Just point me in the right direction. Fantastic. I will mark Fetid Grove on your map. Good luck to you, friend. So, all right, there we flipping go. Lovely. And okay, I pretty much walked straight past the Fetid Grove earlier, it's yeah, on the same body of water over which I saw the ruins of a milk car. Lovely. Okay, Fetid Grove are just around the corner, as I expected, but, um, yes, I cannot but notice it appears to be attached by bridge to a nearby town. Which suggests possibly this situation might be more complicated than I expect, so I'm not going in until I've spoken to the locals of this community, in case, yes, they've got a different take on the situation, so... Uh, hello there, guys, what's going on with you? Know what's funny about having a double? Nothing. Okay, hang on. What have we got going on here precisely? How many Jizzazos does it take to light a torch? One, damn it. And I'm tired of the other one. Terrible straight man. If you talk to Hokvir, he'll know what can be done. He's a smart one. Okay, the Great Divide just began. Okay, when you say there are, um, yes, yes doubles, uh, very literally. Yes. But you are, yes, all different moods. Some of you are all happy and lovely, and some of you are miserable and angry. So, okay, hang about, hang about, hang about. You are, yes, you're extraordinarily happy, and you look miserable as cocking sin. Lovely. So, okay, hang on. Find the other chappy. Are you the one I spoke to or not? Hang about. I don't like you. I don't like my double even more. Okay, so uh, yes, there's a happy, presumably, mania Gizardo, and like, unhappy, presumably, dementia Gizardo. You're still annoying me, but not as much as the other Gizardo. Okay, right, so... This doesn't feel connected to the amulet. We'll come back and deal with this nonsense later. Right, down into the Fetid Grove, and yes, these guys are seriously bloody tanky, so ideally, I'd prefer not to fight them at all. Just get scouted about on, and yes, see if we can just avoid them. Should not be too tricky to do. This is, yeah, down in a cave, so they are going to really struggle to detect me. So here we go. See a couple of them ahead. See another one of you down over here. Can I just walk straight past you? Ooh, you're a bit more perceptive than I'd like to be honest. And no! Okay, it's not going to be that easy, unfortunately, though. Then again, actually, I might just be able to, yeah, toss a summon behind me and jump. This is not the correct way to go. You've literally taken a wrong turn, and now you're taking on enemies you don't need to take on. But yeah, the Grumites are 
hilariously tanky. Like, the only realistic answer to them is 100% get the, uh, yeah, burning weakness on them. Otherwise, they will just keep bloody fighting all day long. But otherwise, uh, not too difficult to deal with, really. Still, bare minimum, good source of, yeah, pretty bloody decent arrows, all things considered. And, uh, madness arrow matrix. Now, could that be, like, a schematic that gets blended with... Uh, Chaos Ore, or whatever it was called, in order to make new stuff. Because uh, if so, uh, murdering these guys could be rather a one. I'm not going to get past you, am I? Oh, that's not going to work. Give it a go, give it a go, give it a go, give it a go, give it a go. Never mind, we almost pulled it off. Just get straight through here. Maybe they won't follow me through this door. And on this occasion, they didn't. Brilliant. Okay, now we're in the right location, because, yeah, the item's actually in this room. So, uh, eyes open, just be aware, yeah, their mages can silence you. Uh, and that can be, you know, a bit on the... Never mind, I've not been silenced. I kind of assumed I was silenced, but it turns out, no, I'm not, I'm absolutely fine. Let's just, uh, sneak around. We're definitely in, yes, like a root system, though. Oh. That's a very high root system. Could I possibly be able to jump out of this root system? Because if so, that would be... Okay. That could be a nice middle platform. We're going to try it. I mean, okay. What's the point of all this jump practice if you can't just occasionally perform incredibly ludicrous jumps? Right. Activate ludicrous boing. And come on. Oh, not even... Oh! Never mind. Yes. Yes. Okay, we can get up there. It's just a matter of... Okay, one of them see me. Might want to, like, you know, take care of him first at the bare minimum. And there we go. More madness or So, I feel like I'm, yeah, on my way to maybe producing, like, the bow of madness or something. Okay, ludicrous boying back on. I just got two. There we go. Made it two here. And now just got two. Come on, game. Behave, I know I could do this. There we go, I'm now at the top. Whether that, like, you know, helps me in any meaningful way, I don't know. But I've escaped the maze and I feel good about life. So, okay, just straight through here. Help myself to, might be this thing right here. Pike's medallion, together with some gold. Oh, I actually just snuck in, stole the thing. And then snug back out again. And it is all because I'm just that good at bouncing. I love it. Okay, back at the lovely town of Hale. Pike, I have got good news for you. Wait a moment. If you'll pardon my manners, you reek of the bogs. You must have been to the fetid grove. My medallion. Ha! I don't know how to thank you. I have decided to stay here in the Shivering Isles. I found peace here. And I see no reason to return. Therefore, I'll not be needing this anymore. Please take it as a reward. Okay, now that. That was a really bloody lovely quest. Okay, just a guy's already pretty happy with his life. But he would like to, you know, have a memento of a part of his old life back. You go and get it to him. He decides he's basically as happy as he was before. But he's also got peace and closure as a result of what you've given him. So therefore, he gives you a piece of his past in return. And uh, now he just gets to live here happily with his true lover in the Isle of Madness, which is admittedly about to sink under the ocean and kill everybody. Okay, we're going to stop that happening because I like Pike and I don't want him to die horribly. Oh, and I will say the Thorn Shield is actually pretty bloody good. Like, uh, Fortified Block, 23 points. That's really useful on a shield, obviously. Reflect Spell, 22%. That's pretty bloody good too. In fact, actually, Spellbreaker is only 30% and weighs up four more and also doesn't come with, you know, 23 points of block. So uh, I think we might be ready to potentially dump Spellbreaker and replace it with this old girl when I need to, you know, block against magic and whatnot. Lovely. Right, that done, I think we know what we need to be taking care of next. I've returned to the town of Split, and uh, yes, indeed, it would appear that everybody here has one extremely happy person and one extremely miserable person 
and they bloody hate each other, and we're going to need to figure out how to, uh, yes, help them uh, live in harmony in some way or another. So how about, yes, we call it apart there and kick off next time by trying to figure out what the bloody hell happened in Split and how potentially we fix it. So that will be coming up very, very soon indeed. Hopefully you are looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Oblivion. Thank you very much and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got a... I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake! This is gonna take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out- DIE YOU MOVING BASTARDS! DIE! DIE! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.